Hey, we're, we are honored to have Travis with us tonight to, to speak to us. He, uh, of course, he's with us uh, all the time except when he's out on the road. And uh, anyway, he and I have been trying to get together on this evening for quite some time. I think this dates all the way back in to July. And uh, anyway, it was July, July 12th, I think. And, uh, but anyway, and then we had another date picked out for him. That wouldn't work for him. And so anyway, uh, August the 30th is the day. It's the day. It's ordained of God. I believe that. And the Lord has a word for us. And I'm confident that Travis has got it. I said, I'm confident that he's got it. And uh, no pressure, Travis. None whatsoever. We know that the Lord's got this, and we're all in for a treat tonight. Let's welcome Travis as he comes. Jesus. You are God in heaven, and here am I on earth. So I let my words be few. Jesus, I am. So in love with you. The simplest of all love songs I want to bring to you. So I let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. And I stand in awe of you, Jesus. Yes, I stand in awe of you. And I'll let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I love Jesus. <laughs> I love Jesus so much. This whole thing's about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, it must be about something else. It has to be about Jesus. If he is our all in all, that means he is everything and he feels everything. And what does it look like if Jesus is your all in all? When somebody brings you an issue, you're like, man, I don't know all I got is Jesus, bro. He's a subscription for everything. I love you, Lord. Whew. Jesus is the gospel. He is the good news. He's what makes the good news so good. <laughs> the Bible says that the word became flesh and he dwelt among us. Jesus is scripture in a body. The Pharisees came to Jesus, and they thought they had it all figured out. They were always trying to trap him. Imagine trying to trap God. So stupid. <laughs> always trying to trap God. I just think that's so funny. I just read my Bible, and I laugh. <laughs> but these dudes, man, they knew the Bible. They knew the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, by memory. 
But when the time of their visitation was at hand, when the Messiah they had longed for all these years was standing right in front of them, they did not recognize him because they knew everything about him, but they did not know the master. And how sad would it be if we miss our time of visitation? When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Philip goes, man, show, it, show us the Father. Be sufficient for us. And Jesus goes, Philip, have you been with me so long and you have not seen the Father? And covenant, have we been with him so long? Have we been on the worship team for so long? Have we been in ministry for so long and yet we have not known him? When you stand before him, what are you going to have? Are you going to have your ministry to back you? Are you going to have your good deeds? What are you going to have? Or is your life going to be a crown worthy to lay at the master's feet? I am so fed up with church as we know it. I, I went to a church not too long ago. It's funny, this story's in my heart. And uh, we get to go to a lot of churches because we travel all over the world <laughs> preaching the gospel. And I went to this church and it was awesome. I mean, the stage was sick. The lights were stellar. The smoke was there. I'm like, dude, Chaotic needs to play here. <laughs> we would kill it here. And the glory of God would fall here. And only here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was really sick. I'm like, man, this place is awesome. Worship team gets up. They're killing it, man. They're so good. So good. And, and the pastors that came up before they started were dynamite. I mean, it was just like, man, this is killer. And I was worshiping the Lord. And I think I was the only one. <laughs> I was worshiping the Lord. <laughs> and I heard the Lord speak. He said, my people are mesmerized and distracted. He told me, I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the earthquake. I'm not in the fire. But I'm in the whisper. And when we stop closing the door, there's your problem. Jesus says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means the secret place is the launching pad for your abiding place. If, if you're having issues, if you're having problems in your life, I have one question for you. Have you abandoned the secret place? Have you abandoned the place where God is? Because in Matthew 6, Jesus said, go in your room, shut the door where nobody is looking, and your Father will see you there, and he will reward you openly. What does your openly look like? Are you stressed? Are you ticked off, man? I don't want to be like those Pharisees. Man, I'd rather know four scriptures of the Bible and walk them out than 66 books and be mean. So these guys, they knew the whole book, man. They knew it. But they didn't know him. And you know, I'm scared about some of the message that's going around right now. And it's good. It's all about who we are. And that's great. We got to know who we are. We got to know identity. That's true. But if we miss knowing him, we have nothing. So Jesus says, boys, you search the scripture because in them you think you have life. But the scripture speaks of me. Psalm 40 says, behold the scroll. I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. This whole Bible is about Jesus. Stop going to your Bible study and start going to him. And when you go to your Bible with him, he will hold your hand through the garden of the scriptures. And you go there and you open up the Bible when nobody's looking. And you shut the door and you say, Lord, where are we walking today? Where are we walking? Oh, that's good, Lord. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing like, nothing can take the place of your ability to be with him. Nothing can beat that place. 
Nothing can take that place. Ask yourself this question. When's the last time when I wasn't at church that I connected my heart with the masters? When's the last time I just wanted to tug on his robe? When's the last time I wept when I thought about those eyes that burned with fire? Thank you, Jesus. I don't have a plan, so y'all bear with me. Psalm 119 says, Psalm 119 one says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. Psalm 40. Psalm 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined his ear and inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. You hear that? <laughs> he also, they also do no iniquity. He also pulled them out of the pit. Behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. Isaiah 42, Isaiah 40, 42, verse 10, says, Sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea, and all that is in it, you coastlands, and you inhabitants in them. Let the wilderness and the cities lift up their voices, the villages that, that keep our inhabitants, uh, the inhabitants of Selah sing. Let a, a shout come from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. When we praise the Lord, he comes in like a mighty man of war. Our job is to look at him. He fights the battles. The battle is the Lord's. <laughs> Tuesday, I had a crazy encounter with the Lord. I didn't know if I'd be able to share this, but I got a green light. So Tuesday, I was so wrecked, and uh, the whole day, I mean, I felt, I felt like I felt every emotion you can feel in one day. It was weird. And, uh, but, but, oh man, I was so just like undone by the Lord, just bawling all day at work. And then I got in my car, and I went, I went to go home, and <laughs> there's a scripture that describes this well, and for the first time, I really kind of started to understand what it meant. It's in Romans 8, 20-something. Let's see where it's at. Romans 8, 26. Yeah. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And I was crying out to the Lord, and I had nothing to say. And for some reason, all I could do was <laughs> groan. I was like, oh, oh. I don't know how I got home. <laughs> you ever been driving, and the Lord's just touching you, and you're like, how did I make it here? <laughs> and so I'm groaning like a weirdo <laughs> in my car, in my truck, just groaning. And, and I was going to go run, and there was no way I was going to run. <laughs> and so anyways, I'm groaning. And I'd run into the house as soon as I get home, and I shut the door, and I grab my Bible, and I say, God, you have to make me what this book says I am. Make me what this says I am. Because my life's not lining up to your life. It's not even lining up to, to, the, 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 to, to the prophets in a lesser covenant. And I know it's not on your end. <laughs> Something tells me it's on mine. <laughs> And so I'm crying out to the Lord, make me what this says I am. Make me what this says I am. And this is where it gets weird, so bear with me. <laughs> if you wanted balance, leave now. <laughs> and so I'm on my knees, and I said, God, 
can I see you? Lord, can I see you? Just let me see you. <laughs> this word gets strange. Out of me. Uh, <laughs> it was so weird. I just start going, Jesus! My neighbor's like right next door. So <laughs> God only knows how that's going. Jesus! As loud as I can. Just bawling. And then I start hearing these whispers. Because the stranger's always speaking. But we, we obey the master's voice and the stranger's voice we do not follow. It doesn't say it stops speaking. But we don't have to listen. It's like when you're in a room full of people and everybody's talking, but you can have conversation with somebody. That's how it is with the Lord. You keep that conversation and you don't even hear that other stuff. But it starts saying, like, this ain't even biblical. What are you doing? And so I'd be like, Jesus! <laughs> you look foolish, Jesus! This is heresy, Jesus! And I'm just crying and screaming until the voice goes away. And then I just wept silently. And the room shifted. And I said, Lord, I don't know what's happening. What's going on? And the sweet Holy Spirit, I heard him speak. He said, you're taking the kingdom by force. <laughs> You see, Matthew eleven twelve, 12, <laughs> Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. He doesn't say that, 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 that we, t we take the enemy by force. He says we take the kingdom by force. This is how I fight my battles. Not like this. This is how I fight my battles. And as I praise that beautiful Jesus, he comes in like a mighty man of war. And he rips the head off of his enemy, the Bible says. It's not my enemy. This has never been about me. Satan can care less about you. It's about the kingdom. The Bible says that the wind and the rains come to beat on the house. Not the man on the house, but the what's been built. Tribulation, Jesus said, comes for the word's sake. He's coming to take the kingdom from advancing. But the violent take the kingdom by force. If the Father could rip the roof off this church tonight and say one thing, he would say, this is my son. This is my beloved son. Hear him. Look at him. Would you, would you just behold him? Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he lovely? Do you want your balance? Do you want your church pews? Do you want your ministry? Or do you want my son who still sits on his own blood? The Christ mercy for me. Christ mercy for you. I'm along for the ride with you guys. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I had awesome notes. They were great. Thank you, Jesus, for making me throw them away. <laughs> they were awesome. Should have heard that sermon. <laughs> it's so funny. The Lord told me a long time ago to not... <laughs> To not go into my, my Bible or to my prayer room or to him for a sermon. And so I get in trouble a lot. Because I'm like, man, but, you know, I could probably write a really good sermon. <laughs> and so I try. And then every time he's like, no, it's not good. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, what if I fall on my face? Yeah, that's where my feet are. Okay, okay. So anyways. One day I was reading this scripture, and I was in 1 Peter chapter 2. I don't know if you guys have read 1 Peter chapter 2, but it is stinking awesome. It's one of my all-time faves. It's so cool. i got to read some context. It's so cool. It's like, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps, who committed no sin, no deceit found in his mouth. Uh, when he was reviled, he didn't revile in return. It goes on to say the amazing scripture, by his stripes you were healed. Isn't, he's the, the shepherd and overseer of your souls. I mean, it's just like, mm, 
I'm just feeling it. I'm crying. I'm like, yeah, Jesus. And I get to chapter 3, and it says, wives, likewise be submissive to your own husbands. And I go, skip. <laughs> and I, I go seven verses down to where it says, husbands. And I heard the Lord say, don't skip that. <laughs> Anybody ever do that? Oh, man, I've been caught there so many times. <laughs> the Lord said, don't skip that. You need that. And I read it again, and I read it again. And the Holy Spirit said, before you can ever be a husband, you must be a bride. You see, Isaiah said, do you not know that the maker is your husband? Do you not know that, 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 that he is your husband? If you're having trouble or issues in your marriage today, I have one remedy for you, and only one will do it. Love Jesus and love Jesus well. He's the only one who can fix your marriage anyway. It's so silly what we do. We, we make so many golden calves, and we name them Jehovah. <laughs> That's what they did. They, they named a golden calf Jehovah. <laughs> but there's only one Jesus. You see, a Jesus that doesn't save isn't the Jesus of the Scripture. But just as much, a Jesus that doesn't heal isn't the Jesus of the Bible. That is straight up heresy. He never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He who was and is and is to come does not change. But where are we? Where do we play in this? Because Jesus said that the signs will follow the believer. They'll cast out devils. <laughs> that one freak you out? <laughs> so many people I run into. Oh, I just don't really think devils exist anymore. I'm like, hang out with Chaotic for like two weeks. Because we run into them all the time. <laughs> one time we were at a gas station. We were praying for a guy. And a dude pulls up in the driveway of the gas station. And he's like, pray for me. I lay my hands on him. He's like, there was a devil that was following him around until he seen us in the parking lot. And the thing ran off. Isn't that cool? That was awesome. We didn't have to try. We didn't do anything. We just loved Jesus, man. There's no, there's no method. You just love Jesus. And you know that loving Jesus is measurable? It is. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Catch us the foxes. Catch us the little foxes that spoil the vine. See, sin only pacifies what only God but only Jesus can satisfy. Jesus and is adultery. There can be no lesser lovers, man. There can be no lesser lovers. <laughs> I love this Bible. <laughs> this, is my, uh, this is my third one, or my fourth, third. Third one since my encounter with the Lord. And uh, I get them in. And uh, I make a little... Bible uh, color code in them and stuff. It's really fun. You guys should do it. And uh, I mark it all up and think I'm going to keep it for life. And then Jesus makes me depart with it. And it hurts. <laughs> the first one I gave away, I gave away to Chris Sumter. And uh, oh my gosh. Oh man. I coveted bad. I was so sad. I felt like my firstborn died. I grieved for like two weeks. <laughs> I don't know if he knows that. It was so bad. I was a wreck, man. It was easier to give away our car than it was my Bible. <laughs> I love that thing. And so anyways, the second one I gave, I gave to a guy in uh, Wales, uh, in the UK. He gave his life to Jesus, and it was awesome. That one was way easier to part with, and uh, I really like this one. I put my name on it as a faith act to keep it, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm not really hearing a no, but I'm going to go for it anyways. I'm going to put my name on this. <laughs> I did an encounter with the Lord uh, March 17th. No, excuse me. Whoa. March 19th, 2017. <laughs> it changed my life, man. It was right there. I had an encounter with the Lord. And uh, it, was, it was awesome. I remember when I got baptized months later in the... Uh, baptismal tank pastor you know he'll, he'll give you the mic and I don't know if I made much sense but I remember saying this I said I'm not a changed man I'm a new man 
It was so true. You know, Jesus doesn't, he doesn't change you. He, he replaces you completely. The life you live is, is no longer yours. What are you doing with his life in you? And you hear the question all the time, why would God do this for me? You know, he, after everything I've done and all that stuff like that, Jesus knew what you would look like with him inside of you from the beginning. He knew exactly what you were made to look like, and he never lost sight of that image through it all, man. There's nobody like the Lord. So I had an encounter with the Lord in March, and I tasted something three years ago that night. I tasted something. <laughs> and when you get even a little taste of him, nothing else tastes good. And I went from like four hours of TV a night and like eight to 12 hours of just crazy metal rock music in my ears all day long to just being so possessed with the Lord, to being so addicted to Jesus, where, where, where not only did TV not satisfy, not only did my rock music not do it for me anymore, but food wasn't good enough. Sleep wasn't good enough. Nothing is good enough when you've tasted from the master. <laughs> and every day is a privilege. And nobody owes you anything, but you owe every man to love him. Isn't it awesome? <laughs> and in that time, uh, I'd already been delivered from pornography like at least six or seven years. Uh, maybe before that, I'm trying to think. I would have been a little shorter. I was, uh, whew, I think I was 20, 21. Can't remember. That was also right here. Every, I always have, it's always right here. So I always gravitate to here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and uh, anyways, been delivered from, from a lot of things before that. But I had an encounter with the Lord. It was crazy. Everything was awesome. Uh, I'm in love with Jesus. Everywhere I go, uh, people are getting saved. Job site, uh, Walmart, whatever. I'm seeing people jump out of wheelchairs in my normal day-to-day -day life. I start getting words of knowledge. I had no idea what that was. And, uh, hey, is something wrong with your thyroid? You know, that's weird. I get in the car. I said, Selena, what's a thyroid? <laughs> so I learned some stuff that day. But there was, man. That lady, she was wrecked. <laughs> you know what they say is so true. He just needs a donkey to ride in on. And I'm like, hee-haw. <laughs> you know what? I'm not too learned for you, Jesus. When he, when he moves on my life, you know, that guy's been with the Lord. He's definitely been with the Lord because there's no way. <laughs> so anyways, man, <laughs> I'm living my life. It's awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. Uh, me and Selena, we're, we're not arguing. We're not fighting. It's good stuff. We're having such a great time in the Lord. We're, we're worshiping Jesus. We're, it's, it, again, instead of everything we used to do. And uh, we, we're just we're so excited. I'd go home and I'd just read my Bible. I, at work, I would just listen to my Bible all day long. And then what started happening was so crazy. I was, I don't remember how far in, maybe a month or two. And I remember one day at work, I was listening to the Bible. And, uh, I mean, all day long. I always had it planned. And a word triggered a thought of something that I did before Jesus, before everything. And I'm like, whoa, what? And I couldn't get it off my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jesus, I just want you, you know? Well, that continued to keep happening. And then I started having these dreams. I mean, I'm in love with Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for like 30 people a week. I, I'm fired up for Jesus. I can't shut up about him. And I go home and, and, and I'm having these dreams. And it was like, I was cheating on my wife and my God. I mean, they were horrible dreams. And I woke up and I would feel so dirty like I did these things. Anybody ever have those? Oh, my gosh. They were so disgusting. And I, I, I couldn't, they were so bad, like, I couldn't even say it. Like, it would violate my conscience to even say the things that was going on in these dreams. And I would wake up and be like, God, what's going on? And I remember one day at work. This was happening. This happened for at least a month. Man, it just kept happening. 
hardcore. Uh, I was listening to the scripture, and my uh, Bible was going, and a word did the same thing. So I, don't, I can't remember it. All I know is that I was listening literally to the scripture, and then all of a sudden, boom, a word triggered a thought. Um, I think it was maybe from a porno or something that I had watched like years and years and years ago. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I just break. I just start bawling. And uh, I, was, I was spraying some boards with paint rig. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I just lost it. I'm like, God, I don't know what's happening. Why does this keep happening? I don't want this. I just want you, Lord. Help me, Jesus, please. And my Bible app did something it never did before. It never did since. It skipped to a completely different part of the Bible. It was so weird. It was so weird. It goes to Luke 4, where Jesus is in the wilderness, and he's being tempted by Satan. And he keeps saying, is it, is it not written? It is written. Is it not written? And I heard the Lord say, do what I did. <laughs> Changed my life. And so every time that, that the lies would come, I would put truth in its place. Every time those would come, I would say, Father, I thank you for reminding me. And I knew it wasn't God, but he's not worth your time. I knew it wasn't God, but I, I said, Lord, thank you for reminding me that old things pass away and all things become new. And I'd have these dreams in the middle of the night, and I'd raise my hands, and I'd say, Father, I thank you so much for reminding me that the blood of Jesus covers my life. And before you know it, you're in your prayer room on the floor sobbing for two hours over the nations because Satan was the one who woke you up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like... We ought to give him a hug in eternity for getting us closer to Jesus. He cannot win. He can't. And he's not going to bum rush the throne. Lightning, back down. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But he tries to sit on the throne of your mind. But you don't have to let him. Is it not written? Is it not written? And I hear so many people that believe those lies and they listen to the lies but is it not written that you're, you're a new creation, that old things have passed away, that behold, all things are now new, all things are of God? Man, it's wonderful. Aaron, would you come in? Are you over here? Golly. <laughs> Just to remove all doubt. <laughs> God has to be on me or this ain't happening. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> no one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. You know, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Jesus came uh, from the bosom of the Father. And you know what's so awesome? is that the Son perfectly declares the Father. If you want to know what God in heaven looks like, look at the life of Jesus on the earth. Yeah. It's awesome. It's true. It's true. The Bible says that he's the express image of the Father. He is the image of the invisible God. I say it all the time, and I'll say it a billion times till I turn red. This whole thing is about Jesus. You know, Paul said, I, 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 I preach Christ and him crucified. Where is that? That's in Corinthians. Yeah. Let's go there. Let's go there. That's going to be good. Yeah. Oh, I love this part. It says, oh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 2. It says, and I, brother, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know, not know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and feared and trembling. And my speech and my, my preaching were not with persua persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hmm. This whole thing is about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, man. Paul said, oh, where is that at? 
Y'all bear with me. Yeah. He said, oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly. And indeed, you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. For I betroth you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. This is Paul's fear. Listen real close. But I fear less somehow as, as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. So your minds will be corrupted, be taken away from the, the simplicity that's in the Christ. He says, I fear less somehow as, as a serpent deceived Eve with his craftiness. That you'd be taken away the same way she was by the simplicity by the simple message of Jesus. It's all Jesus, man. What did she do? She, 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 she took her eye off the tree of life. She, she took her ear and she listened to a different voice. She wanted more. My question is, how can you have more than everything? He feels all things. He feels all things. Do you remember what it was like when somebody would say his name and you had to like turn your head away from them because you started crying? You remember what that's like? Do you remember the days where you would hear the simplest little songs that, that weren't even good? Like this little light of mine or spring up all well or whatever. And you're just bawling and you don't know why. Anybody? <laughs> Where, oh, it blows my mind and there's a lot that's good that's happening in the church but what about the others there's a scripture in Hebrews it's right towards the end of it it says others oh my god it convicts me it's in, the, it's in Hebrews 11. And he's going on. Most people think it was Paul. Some people think it's Apollos. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was Jesus for sure. And he's like, what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Barak and Samson, and all these guys, David and Samuel, the prophets. These dudes shut the mouths of lions. They were awesome, man. Women received their dead to life again. Then it says others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. What does that look like? Deny Jesus or die. Deny Jesus or die. Jesus is Lord. Poof. Still others had mocking, uh, trials of mark, mocking, scourgings, yes, and chains and imprisonment. You know, Paul said that chains and imprisonment, uh, uh, all this stuff waits for me everywhere I go. Yet none of these things move me because I've been moved by the God man. And they were stoned. They were sown into, the, 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 the church was bought in blood. They were slain with the sword. They wandered around in sheepskins and goatskins. They were destitute, afflicted, tormented, who the world was not worthy of. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens of the caves of the earth. And all these obtained a good testimony through faith and did not receive the promise. What? God had him providing something better for us. They shouldn't be made perfect apart from us. There's a cloud of witnesses that say, run, run. Who cares if none go with you? Ah, who cares? I can hear the blood of Stephen crying out. None went with me. When I was stoned. Could you imagine what that looked like? 
When Stephen was stoned at the command of the guy who wrote most of the New Testament, what kind of love is this? Blows my mind. And Jesus stood for his first martyr. You look in the scripture and his dispositions, he's always seated at the right hand. He stands and he says, well done, Stephen. Well done. Well done. And Stephen says, forgive them, Father. Doesn't that sound familiar? Please don't charge them with this sin. Jesus, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. But I know them. And my blood's worth it. You see, Jesus thought you were worthy of his blood. So when you hear those lies, you're not worthy. You should just kill yourself. No, 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 no. The father thought I was worthy of his son. The Bible says that it pleased the father to bruise the son. How could it please God to bruise Jesus? Because he knew that with every hit, that with every pounding of the nails, that another son and another daughter would come in. The scripture says in Psalm 22, they pierced my hands. They pierced my feet. I can count my bones. They look and they stare at me. The naked God man hangeth on a tree. What kind of love is this? Your tax refund can't do that for you. What kind of love is this? Your boss can't do that for you. Your wife can't do that for you. They pierce my hands, my feet. I can count all my bones. They hung me on a tree. They stared at me, the naked God man who hung the stars hanging on a tree. King Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. King Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. A weight so heavy no man could bear. And if he didn't say, into my hands I commit my spirit, I don't know if he would have died. Jesus says, no man takes my life from me, but freely I give it. Who could have stood that? Who could have handled that? The time of having an opinion is over. I don't want an opinion. I want Jesus. We don't need another opinion. We need the God man. Aaron can't save you. Pastor Keith can't save you. Donald Trump cannot save you. Biden cannot save you. Only the blood of Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can save you. You are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold handed down by the useless, by the aimless tradition and religion of your fathers. But you were bought with the precious blood of the Lamb. You see, there's one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. And so I'll say it again. If it's about something else, it must not be about Jesus. This isn't our church. This is his church. Brent didn't pay for it with his own blood. Jesus paid for it with his blood. Who cares if the seats are full? I care if Jesus comes. We are to make a habitation for the Lord. But if you don't ever shut your door, you won't know that. The early church had a saying. I love it so much. They said, we are the church. We are those who laugh at death. Death, where is your sting? See, you're not afraid of heights. I'm not afraid of dogs. <laughs> Speaking that in faith. <laughs> when I'm running, I'm like, oh, God. 
Help me, Jesus. You're not afraid of somebody shooting your brains out. You're afraid of death. The early church said, it was said of them, man, they laugh at death. Death, where is your sting? Jesus is king. 